Artificial intelligence can spark either hope or hesitation, especially when it comes to health care. But it's already being utilized right here on the Stanford campus and in clinics, from cardiology to ophthalmology. How is AI, the algorithm, used in your clinic? In the past, when most people think about individuals who care for their diabetes, you're thinking about poking your finger and getting a blood drop and putting it on a meter, but that's not the case anymore. Right now, most individuals living with diabetes, they get to have a continuous glucose monitoring and it gives them 288 data points in one day. So as clinicians, we're trying to really understand and wrangle all that data, and AI has really helped us do that. So AI speeds up the process because you get the results in real time, and you can reach out to these patients in real time. As soon as that refresh button is hit on this screen, those people who need the priority, they just go right up to the top. And there's actually a lot of data that shows that when you have technological advances in diabetes, our most minoritized families are left behind. So the AI has a far better outreach to these underserved communities. Exactly, it helps us get to those communities faster. And that's all because you're able to prioritize through this dashboard that we've created and it floats people up right to the top. So AI is a term that people use a lot these days. How is AI used in this aspect when you're diagnosing a patient with a cardiac problem? These kinds of ultrasound videos, like the one that Deb's taking now, there are tens of millions of these done every year just in the US. It's a very routine way for doctors to assess how well the patient's heart is functioning, whether they are at risk for a stroke or heart failure. Where the AI can come in is that the AI that we develop is a computer vision-based algorithm that can look at these ultrasound videos and then help the doctor to assess what is the condition of the patient's heart. So it's another tool in the doctor's toolkit. It's not necessarily taking any treatment away from the patient. That's right. It's just a tool that helps to inform the doctors quickly as, as to what is the condition of this patient. So I'm identifying here a small macule. I'm going to take a closer look at it under endoscopy. And then I can bring a, a smartphone over and capture the image. The algorithm will be able to analyze the image in real time and produce an output whether or not it needs to be biopsied. So it's speeding up the process, in other words. Yeah, and, and automating it as well. So Dave, explain to me how AI is involved in this process of, of screening diabetic patients. It allows patients who are seeing their primary care doctor for their normal health check to get an eye exam for diabetic eye disease while they're here, so they don't have to schedule another appointment. That photograph is immediately interpreted by the AI algorithm. If they're positive, then they're immediately referred for an in-person eye exam. How significant is the use of AI in ophthalmology, especially with diabetes patients? I think one of the largest problems that I see in my daily practice as a retinal physician is that patients with diabetic eye disease present later than we would like to our clinics, often with irreversible vision loss. So being able to detect the disease earlier and then being able to intervene at the earlier stages when we can actually turn things around, preserve vision, I think is really important. With all these technologies involving AI being churned out almost on a daily basis, what safeguards are in place? That's where Stanford's RAISE Health Initiative comes into play. So in a nutshell, can you tell me what RAISE Health, what the AI initiative is all about? RAISE Health is an acronym for Responsible AI for Safe and Equitable Health. Our first responsibility is always to our patients. And we know already that AI is helping to improve the care we provide to our patients. We want to continue to do that, but we also want to make sure that we or others don't misuse AI in ways that actually harm patients. Do you see a happy marriage between AI and the health care, the medical care, or even the clinical studies that we provide to patients? This is a win-win proposition in the end if we do it correctly, and we want to make sure we're doing it correctly. For the opportunity to improve access to care, to improve the delivery of care to underrepresented populations, that opportunity is enormous.